Ah, uh, that's nice too. I get excited about this also. I just like Derm Path. Okay, what, look at this. So like Raj was saying earlier, uh, or Dr. Singh, excuse me, there's a, a Gren zone here. <laughs> I, I personally don't find the Gren zone to be a very useful concept for most things. It does work pretty nice for granuloma facial, and it does, I guess, work for this, but I feel like in general, I, I feel like the rule gets violated so much that I just have given up on it. But look at this. We got some sort of infiltrate all in the dermis and the subcutis. It's very striking how it's organized into structures, kind of, right? How would you describe these? Nodules. Yeah, there's nodules, and some of the nodules are kind of elongated. Look at this one. It's kind of like almost serpiginous, like kind of a snake or an S-shape or, or an elongated linear kind of shape, okay? So let's go closer and see what this infiltrate is. Well, it's kind of hard to tell. It's cells with a bunch of cytoplasm. Usually that should be a thought of histiocytes. Whenever you see cells, or whenever I see cells and I'm like, I don't know what kind of cell that is. The answer is histiocyte. I, that's how I learned it. Honestly, I asked my mentor who had like little triads for how to remember, remember everything. Dr. Rowe would always teach them. And I said, Dr. Rowe, what's a triad for a histiocyte? And he's like, well, you'll have to make that one up yourself, Jared. So what I learned was that once I learned all the cells and there was something left over, it's histiocyte. Because they kind of are vague and they just blend into their surroundings. And, and so anyway, that's the way. I do things. And you can see there's bluish kind of fuzzy, frothy, bubbly stuff. I mean, honestly, you could, if you look at this at high power, you could think about metastatic signet ring carcinoma. A real subtle example of that could certainly look that way. Pathologists are really paranoid about that always. But also when you see histiocytes with little bluish stuff in them, always think of organisms, okay? And particularly here, when you have histiocytes that are aggregated in these linear, this isn't like a well-formed sarcoidal granuloma. It's kind of a loose granuloma, this process. It's sheets of histiocytes. I guarantee there'll be plasma cells in there if we hunt around for a while. And they're kind of growing around the, the dermal structures. They're around uh, the eccrine coils. They're around the nerves. They're around vessels. Once I tell you nerves, then you're like, oh, yeah. But they grow around all the other structures, too, in the nerves. Because nerves and vessels tend to track together. And they often get near eccrine coils. So I feel like in this disease, often I see eccrine coils surrounded like this and vessels. See, look, here's a nerve right here, though. Boom, that's a nerve right there. So what stain do we do, and what is the diagnosis? Yeah, this is leprosy. This is lepromatous leprosy, and you can do the fight stain, which is a different form of acid fast stain, and there will be like a bajillion, maybe two bajillion even, a lot of organisms in this. Each of these places, these little holes, are called globi, and they're filled with like thousands and thousands of organisms, so you usually on H&E can actually see them. It's hard on scan because they're so small, but you can see this fuzzy little material in the spaces, and you can learn to, to pick up leprosy. And uh, obviously leprosy is endemic in many parts of the world still, like India and the Middle East. But also we see it in Arkansas a few times a year we diagnose this, usually from people who have had something to do with armadillos, the nine-banded armadillo. The vast majority of them in wild populations in the southern uh, and southeastern United States carry leprosy and they have a huge load. They have like 200 times the amount of organisms that humans have. I don't know why they're cool with it. They're just like, it's fine. Like, you know, they're, so I keep, every time I drive past the dead armadillo on the road, which I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, where do you live? I live in Arkansas. We have armadillos. I'm always like, I got to stop and get some tissue and we're going to make some controls. And so in my mind, I keep thinking about getting armadillo roadkill to make controls. <laughs> Control tissue is hard to come by for fight. Unless you live in India or somewhere where you got leprosy all the time, it's hard to find good uh, fight controls, right? I mean, that's a good, that's good news. That means that we're wiping out mycobacteria but it's actually hard to find control tissue. We do this stain all the time and rarely, we only find uh, organisms in a small subset, but we stain not because you don't want to miss it, right? So lepromatous leprosy, and there's all these borderline forms and all that stuff to me is clinical. The more important thing about classifying leprosy is on the lepromatous end, you have sheets of these frothy histiocytes and you have numerous organisms, okay? And then on the other end, you have these sarcoidal tight granulomas with big epithelioid, um, cells, and they will also track along nerves, and they will have very few organisms, and sometimes you'll stain and look, and you're like, I'm sure it's got to be leprosy, but I don't see any organisms. So in those cases, usually we'll send it off for PCR um, to make sure, because usually the differential there is sarcoidosis, which also can sometimes track along nerves, and can cause anesthesia and nerve tingling and stuff like that, the same kinds of thing leprosy does. And if the PCR fails, then what we usually tell our clinical team is treat it with steroids and watch the patient closely. If it gets better, it's sarcoid. If it gets worse, biopsy again, it's probably leprosy. And that's what actually the Hansen Disease Center, Hansen's Disease is a pseudonym for uh, leprosy. There's a Hansen's Disease Research Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They used to have a leper colony in uh, rural Louisiana, and then they don't have that anymore. They've moved to, um, to Baton Rouge, and they actually are excellent experts. They know all about leprosy. They'll coordinate with local doctors and send drugs, I think for free, actually, because patients have to stay on meds for like a year. 
So really good to know about that. If you ever get a patient with leprosy, either the CDC or the Hansen's Research Center are great resources um, that can help your patients. So this is lepromatous leprosy. We're actually writing a paper about leprosy in Arkansas because we think people don't know that, it, that it's there, but it's out there. Those armadillos are dangerous, man. 